Here we are again for the uh, third part of our conversation, and we're going to talk, uh, continue talking about how to develop a plan. The communication flow. It is important that communication works properly, and is one of the most complex things to actually manage during an uh, emergency. It works much better if you have tried it before, if you have prepared the material, if you have some redundancy, for example, batteries for our uh, handheld radios and are not only dependent from our cell phones. And we have an idea how to actually manage. Is a central node going to coordinate everything or is the uh, communication actually going on in, with different, in, in different ways? Most importantly, who determines the level of the alarm? Who, who is, has the authority to actually say, okay, now we're going to uh, treat this as an emergency situation. We are going to implement our plan. One of the considerations. Obviously, we need a list of entities to contact. Definitely, the emergency services are among the most important ones, but also our uh, utility companies, gas, water, electricity, security, internet, um, cultural institution, for example, uh, district culture so superintendent, and then specialized uh, companies in our transport, dry freeze, and whatnot. The list is very long. Obviously, the list is, not, is useless if it's not updated. We need to consider that also administrative and legal regulations need to be followed. We need to be cognizant what the situation is in which we are living to actually proceed in the most proper way. We need to have and obtain the approval of the plan at some point. Uh, somebody needs to sign and we need to review the plan. So know and respect the rules, follow the established procedures for your institutions, for your situation, your area. And remember that once the, uh, uh, the plan has been approved, the person signing also is responsible for the plan, also for the updating. I would say that at the minimum, the plan needs to be reviewed once every year and any time there are significant changes. For example, if uh, new pieces are coming to the collection, if they, we have a hosting a temporary exhibition and whatnot. Let's talk a little bit about education, training, and exercises. Uh, I started cooperating with Krems University in 2016, and already we developed some plans, and then we put them into practice, we implemented them, analyzing then how, how they went, what needed to be changed the next time. Um, we then had other sort of exercises, a large one, the evacuation of the Malk Abbey in 2018, and then I worked also with other institutions. And again, look, this, look at this from a media perspective, please, not Please always involve fire department, always involve the police. We already said they need the training. They need to get acquainted with the situation. If they can do it, and very often they're very eager to come, to be introduced to the, to the structure, to the museum, walk through it, see what the problems are. They are immensely helpful in even giving you counsel how to uh, better uh, prepare and better save and defend your, your institution. Obviously, they are very, very good. They look very good on uh, media products as well. And we want to generate uh, also the benevolence and the interest in our population. Consider that when there is an emergency, you might not even be allowed and permitted to go within the institution. So if possible, emergency personnel might help you out and uh, take over the role also of transporting some pieces to the triage station Obviously, they need to learn how to do it properly, and it is your role, your personnel, your experts to need to do that. Uh, if possible, try to always involve the leather uh, truck of the fire department. That's a big attraction. Children love it, and then they get hooked, and they might even come back to look at the museum. At the triage station, the pieces are brought out from the situation of immediate danger. They are evaluated and then further uh, uh, directed to different sort of treatment or storage. 
packaging, as we already said, very different kind of materials, very different kind of objects. You can have one expert that is supervising and the volunteers who are working. Please, if there is hazardous materials, always think of safety of our personnel first. So issue them with the proper protective, personal protective equipment and mark the pieces. For example, this was a book with some mold. We marked it properly so that even people down the chain would know that might actually contain potentially hazardous material. We need to pay attention when we are transporting the pieces, doing the proper way, normally two people. If we can have chariots or dollies and so on, use those. It can be very tiring to actually continue this uh, activity for long hours. One activity which cannot at any cost uh, uh, overlook is documentation. We need to understand what came out of the emergency situation and where it went. And you cannot do that if you do not document it properly with templates that you have prepared before and then you're filling in in the emergency and if possible with videos and with pictures as well. Now let's look at the third part of our conversation here, the resources. Where can we find information? Where can we find help or potential important suggestions to develop our plan? Well, one very useful product is the facility port report that normally is completed when we are lending or actually we are accepting a temporary exhibition. Uh, also for uh, insurance purposes, a lot of information needs to be handed over. This information can and should be contained and then further developed into our plan. There is a host of institutions and organizations that can help us. A lot of information is available for free on the website. I always included the links that are working and you will receive the uh, copies of the presentations as well. So where to find these documents that are updated and were developed, especially for emergency situations. Here we have two products of uh, ICROM, the International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, but also ICOM has two products. One source of information I find absolutely awesome is Silk, and you have the, um, sorry, you have the website mentioned here. They actually, if you know nothing about how to start developing a plan, they guide you step by step, analyzing all the different sort of, of threats. Absolutely awesome. Another possibility to keep updated is getting weather forecasting tools and emergency service uh, forecasts and alerts. Nowadays, easily accessible even to our handheld uh, platforms. We might have very, very brief and summary uh, documents like this one with hazards, with some precautions. Then at some point the incident happens, what do you do in the emergency action? What do you do later on in restoration and reconstruction? I really like infographs. They have an easy way to access information. Sometimes text is not even necessary. Some of them are prepared even by institutions, for example, the Ministry of Culture. I like even during exercises, especially for the media uh, uh, awareness, uh, info tables and infographics, very easy to understand. Uh, another tool that uh, can be very useful is the table of methodology where you in one, on one sheet of paper, you are actually bringing in all the information and we, you actually have it available at one glance. You have uh, legal uh, institutions, uh, partners, uh, current situation, information about the standardization, the location, um, database, lists that you need to prepare, materials that you need, uh, what you need to actually to, to prepare yourself, uh, like the emergency box, emergency material, um, objects and uh, uh, surveys that you are conducting, for example, to see uh, where uh, to move, what kind of flow these uh, cultural pieces need to follow to get to safety, how to implement the plan, where you're moving them, and then something about the training. Uh, this is a brainstorm, quick brainstorming session, and it is 
was it was one of the steps that we took to actually generate uh, a bigger uh, evacuation plan during ex exercise as you see very very schematic just enough to have an understanding at very main points bullet points what you need what your trainer thought is and then you can develop them further obviously Personnel lists are uh, very, very useful, especially because you have the luxury to prepare them before the emergency starts. Uh, the names are actually left blank. Then when, if and when the emergency happens, then you just fill in the, the names and they already know what the position is, what equipment they will need, what their task is. Uh, very simple tool, easy to keep uh, an uh, overview of what is going on. Obviously, you need to understand where you are. So maps and construction plans are very helpful, easily to work with with digital tools. Checklists that also allow us to understand the flows, the data, the deadlines, procedures, and so on. We have a couple of examples. There is different um, publications that I, I chose to actually share, even if they're not specifically for uh, European employment, but you might be even be contacted by uh, third parties who might uh, uh, work in a capacity as an expert for other institutions that might want to, uh, that are actually um, operating in crisis situations. There are uh, some videos that we will not see, but you have the links available to actually look at them uh, at your leisure. Two applications I would like to share with you. One is the ITPC of the Carabinieri Command for the Protection of Cultural Heritage. The second one is the uh, ID Art application by Interpol. They are working similarly. What do they allow you to do? First of all, to make a research by text content and also by pictures. So visual uh, search of pieces that have uh, that uh, are wanted, let's say that are on a wanted list that have been stolen or that have been trafficked. And on the, the second um, possibility that I really uh, enjoy to have at disposal is you can actually enter the data or the pictures of your pieces and even of sites. So of monuments, for example, um, it's a very simple process. And at the end, you get an object ID. Basically, the, all this information is stored in this in these databases. Should the piece at some point be destroyed, damaged, or actually disappear, and then uh, then the authorities have the enough information to actually be able to look for this piece worldwide and for for long periods some pieces that are stolen resurface 20 30 50 years after they have been stolen we go towards a recap so we continue with the de plan development and we said okay communication flow is very important we need to be cognizant and abide to administrative and legal regulations the plan needs to be approved and needs to be reviewed to be updated Education, training, and exercises are absolutely key because during exercises, when we conduct these drills, we actually find what the loopholes are, what the problems are we have not thought of, and then we can improve our plans. We've spoken uh, about possible resources where we can get information and help. And then we will be speaking about networking.